All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Fears video with Fat Phil. And I had planned to release this video yesterday, and the day got away from me. I had a bunch of bunch of stuff going on uh, that I normally use for my time to create Star Wars Galaxy of Fears videos. So, last night we got this crazy news in the forums. We're just going to skip over right away, where uh, we got this post from Meathead that says, "Hey, there's droids everywhere." I don't know how long transmission, right? All this stuff, and then July second reinforcements needed. The Battle of Naboo is upon us. I am, a lot of us are taking this as the raid is dropping July 2nd, which is about a week. So we have had, you know, the, we've had the information on the raid now for a little bit. And now it's like, boom, raid is here. Time to get prepared. So I was planning to release this as a way too soon raid guide. Now we're going to get into, hey guys, here's the characters I'd kind of be eyeing up going into the raid, but also just some words of caution, warning, and why it coming this soon could actually be a very good thing. So we're going to get into the game, guys. Please like and subscribe, comment down below. Let's give a huge shout out to all of our channel members for continuing to support me through thick and thin, through good content, through bad content. Um, you know, I fully recognize that I've not been the most active uh, on YouTube, right? It's, you know, it's been a journey. So I do appreciate you guys sticking with me. You all are fantastic. I love you so much. Um, thank you again. I, I, I lose the words to express my gratitude to you guys. So we're going to talk about the raid here, guys. Uh, I'm getting very excited because I think this Naboo raid is going to be a great direction for the game, even if the requirements are a little bit harder than we've had before. All right. So let's, we got to start off with the big hitters, right? So with Queen Amidala, the, we got the new characters up here, and I just want to kind of preface the ways I'd look at this as a free of play. And it depends where you are in the game, but someone like Queen Amidala, I think she's well worth the relics, even if you don't have Padawan Obi-Wan and Master Qui-Gon yet. She's going to be vital in the raid. You're going to be able to create a team for her that will still score well. I think this is going to be one of those situations where, yes, you want the best team for her possible. You want Padawan Obi-Wan. You want Master Qui-Gon. But don't be afraid to relic her and kind of use her with some different teams in order to get usage out of them. Like, I think that she'll be fine even without, you know, Master Qui-Gon, Padawan Obi-Wan. And the same thing about Padawan Obi-Wan and Master Qui-Gon. If you weren't able to unlock Queen Amidala in Conquest, but you have the ability to farm Master Qui-Gon, farm Obi-Wan, I would go ahead and do that. Like, they're... In a way, they're almost a little bit easier to use in this raid because they've got that Galactic Republic Jedi tag. So you can use them with Keller and Beck, Kaidi Mundi, those kinds of characters to fill in slots. And they're going to be extremely valuable to your account. So I just want to encourage you to not shy away from either Queen Amidala or those two simply because you're not going to be able to complete the team, right? That, hey, I'm not going to be able to get Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan for a while, but I have Queen Amidala. She's worth gearing. And the same would be said for the other two guys as well. I think this is going to be an area where you can really kind of stretch your roster a little bit farther by including someone like Queen Amidala or including these guys. Now, with the Gungans, on the other hand, they're kind of like the Musketeers, right? It's all for one and one for all. You've got to get all of them. It's going to take dedication here. Either you're going to go for Jar Jar or skip him. I don't think there's a middle ground where I'm like, oh yeah, you know, just get a couple of the Gungans and you'll be fine for the raid. Like, either invest everything here or nothing. Personally, I'm going everything. As you guys can tell, we're closing in on Gungan Boomadir. Um, just kind of waiting around. If Jar Jar's event dropped like today, I would just spend the crystals, you know, I'd spend my crystals to get this guy up, right? I'd buy these 10 shards and we'd move on with life. But don't need to be doing that yet. So... Um, you know, but again, with the Gungans, unlike this team up here, I'm not going to recommend just building one or two of them, right? You want the full team. Now, the nice thing will be here. I want to say this about the Gungans. They're still going to be able to be utilized in the raid without Jar Jar. How well they'll do is up for debate, but we can at least still utilize them in the raid without Jar Jar Binks. And I think that will be an extremely important part for a lot of players to recognize because unlike the speeder bike raid and the Cray dragon raid where you were kind of building towards that job of the hut or leia organa and you could use some of their requirements in the raid and then you could still use them without their ultimate with jar jar he's not permanently in the journey guide so you are going to end up using these guys in the raid probably without jar jar so just you know be be prepared for that but recognize that you there's not one or two of these ones to build and then the sap 
Now, I'm on I'm going to say this of all the new characters that have been released, this is the one that I think is going to be the most free to play friendly. I think this is the one that is truly going to be the the ticket to success for a lot of you. Um I think that this will number 1, it only has a single Zeta, which is awesome. But it fits into a team that is very easy to gear. The Separatist droids. Obviously, General Grievous not a wreck, but I think the Snap is going to be the free-to-play hero here. It's a hero unit. And yes, there's Kyra attack, but there's only one Zeta. And it fits into a, a team that a lot of players have inv made investment in. So I think this is the one unit that I'm going to say of the new ones, I'd target it. It's also in the Cantina. So it's a single farm, very easy. Eight energy node too. Let's make sure we're like, oh, 16, sorry, 16. I thought it was eight. That's Captain Tarples. It is a 16 energy node, my bad. Not as good, but still accessible, still easy to get. I think the snap is gonna be the one that I would recommend everybody build as I think it's gonna be the easiest to utilize. So I did wanna mention these new characters. I know some of you are like, Phil, I'm not gonna get any of them. That's fine. This next part is gonna you know, help us out here. So. Then we move into what I'm going to say is the criteria for the rest of the characters that we're going to mention and then kind of just a few ones at the end. So they need to meet these three criteria for to meet what I'm going to say for a lot of you is, hey, look for characters that are easy to farm, meaning they're in a store location like Cantina, Guild, Guild Activity, um, Galactic War, Squad Arena, somewhere like that, that they're, or a Cantina node, right? An easy farm, something that's very quick. Easy gear. To me, this just means that they don't take Kyratech until their finisher piece for gear 13. If they're a character that existed pre Kyratech, they're going to be easy to gear because it's just core gear, which is very accessible. And then finally, dual purpose. Dual purpose means that they're going to be utilized in either their Galactic Legend requirement and they're going to be needed in the raid, or they're a fantastic character, or they are a pilot or something, right? That they they have more than one use inside than just being a raid character. As we build into this game and kind of progress through, I want to encourage you to try to build things that check off multiple boxes at the same time. So the first one we're going to look at here is your Core 3 Galactic Republic Jedi. These three are fantastic Galactic Republic Jedi for different reasons. Grandmaster Yoda, probably the best of this bunch here. You can use them with Jedi Master Kenobi. Use them with Jedi Master Luke. Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, Jedi Knight Luke. Jedi Knight Ray. Like uh, he, you can use them everywhere. Mace Windu, not quite as versatile because he has a taunt, which can kind of pull him away. Like, you don't want to use him quite with Jedi Master Luke because Mace Windu does have a taunt. But... Still very good with Qui-Gon Jinn, Keller and Beck, Jedi Master Kenobi, even like Padme teams. You know, Mace Windu has a lot of good uses there. And then Qui-Gon Jinn, he's a, um, he's a Galactic Legend wreck, and he has the Grand Arena Omicron. So all these guys are required for Jedi Master Kenobi. I should have prefaced that. But Qui-Gon does have that GAC Omicron, which can make that team very, very good. Um, this is a great, like, starter to an early team, and very easy to get, very easy gear, because Grandmaster Yoda, even though he's a legendary character, getting five Jedi is not hard, and especially if you're building for this raid, like, it's even easier. So, I want to make sure that we take advantage of those guys. Now, the next three units that we have here are Luminara, Ayla Sakura, and Plo Koon. Now, if you just want to be as cheap as possible, Ayla Sakura is also a Jedi Master Kenobi wreck, and then Plo Koon is part of the Negotiator fleet. So right there, you've got five Galactic Republic Jedi that you can take advantage of. So, you know, you've got a team. The only thing I want to mention here is that Luminara seems like she's going to be very good in the raid based on some of the information we got. Um, that if you go back to the, and we'll go back to the forums here for a second. And it's, uh, whoops, let's go back here. I believe it was, yeah, there we go. We're going to flip back over here for a second, just because I want to make sure that we prep, you know, show this Galactic Republic. And it says it right here, Jedi healers and supports gain 50% max health and they gain, you know, defense and max protection. And then at the start of their turn, Galactic Republic allies gain 10% defense penetration for each buff on them. And then if the ally in the leader slot is a healer, whenever they recover health, they recover protection you know, like all of these things are super, super nice. So Luminara is that, you know, Jedi healer and support. So that's kind of why I'm throwing her into the mix. 
I think that she will probably be that character that we're going to look to. So that's why I'm saying she's the potential MVP. Like, I think she's going to be extremely important for this raid. She's a character that I'm definitely looking at taking to Relic levels. So just put that in the back of your head a little bit. Luminara, definitely one that I'd probably kick out Ayla personally. Um, just kind of going off of the, you know, what's available to us. So I did want to mention her. But then we've got these three characters, Newt, Maul, Insidious. Darth Maul, that is. So with these guys, again, they check all the boxes above. Uh, same with all these characters. Every single one of those characters, stores or cantina nodes. Same thing with these guys, stores, cantina nodes, easy gear, right? None of them taking Chirotech before gear 13. So um, they're also, all three of these guys are required for Galactic Legends, while Maul is actually required at Relic 4 for Sith Eternal and Relic 7 for Leviathan, and he's a pilot. So, and he's a hero unit for this raid. Darth Maul going to be extremely important. Um, so I think you could make a half decent dark side team with just those three. Like I 100% would tell you that I think those three could be a half decent dark side team. Um, but there's more, right? You've also got the other separatist droids. The one thing I want to say about the separatist droids, you, Magna Guard and B2, very easy to obtain. They're not hard. Uh, Droidica is on a hard node, but it's shared with the Xanadu blood. So you would have a seven star Droidica just from farming Xanadu blood for, uh, executor unless you bought the light speed bundles so it, it's pretty easy to get there now b1 is the gosh yeah this dude's gonna be a problem because he's on a hard fleet node with it's absolutely criminal drop rates criminal criminal drop rates unfortunately there's not a lot you can do there but um even if you slowly work towards it you'll be able to get him uh, again, they do make a very good team with General Grievous, but I think those are kind of the characters that I'd say, like, up above, you know, once we, this next one's down here, we're going to ignore for a second that these characters from, like, B1 and up to, you know, like, Yoda, these are the characters that if I'm looking at you and saying where to invest your resources as a new player in the game, as a free-to-play, if you're not looking at some of the stuff up here, it's down in this range. It's the characters that are going to dual purpose easy gear and you know accessible farms i think that will really help you improve your account like you'll be able to farm just take this into consideration you'll be able to farm all of these guys like i mean yoda is a legendary but you like you'll be able to get mace windu qui-gon newt darth maul sidious you know uh luminara uh without touching a node right none of them are actually on a hard node they're all in or a cantina node even they're all in stores which opens up the opportunity to build either the Staff or Gungans. So I did want to just mention those things. Now, Keller and Beck and Kaidi Mundi. I know that these are not quite as accessible characters, but I do believe, especially I think Kaidi Mundi, when I say that Kaidi Mundi is going to be crazy for this raid because of his unique ability that at the start of battle, all allies are Galactic Republic Jedi. They gain speed, health, and offense. And the bigger part here is that support and healers have offense equal to 10% of their max health. So with all of the health gains that they're going to be getting, I think he is going to really, really boost the amount of damage on those teams. So my recommendation is going to tell you right away that, hey, if you have the ability to gear Cuddy Mundi, do it. This raid, he's going to shine. Keller and Beck, I think, will be a solid character just as kind of a filler if you have him, that you can kind of put him in that Queen Amidala team or a Galactic Republic Jedi team. I don't know if his leadership will be as good in the raid as some of the others, simply because of that, you know, Luminara, but you could potentially come up with a secondary team for Keller and Beck, or maybe you got to throw him in with the uh, Queen Amidala team just to get a Relic 7 out of it, you know, whatever the case is. But I do think that they're both solid investments for what they do outside of this raid as well. Um, so I did want to at least mention them in that in that light. Then we get down to these five characters. And I'm just going to say that I have a feeling that they're going to be like the best raid characters. I, I don't know why. I just have this feeling that these guys are going to be the best raid characters. Because that's what Capital Games does to us. Um, you know... Listen, they might be god tier in the raid, right? Just prepare yourself that these characters could be god tier in the raid. What I'm going to say is 
as someone, if you're in the lower levels of the game, I'd even argue, like, even at my level where I'm at, I'm not sure if I'm going to invest gear into these guys. I think the only way that I would ever invest into them would be if I somehow decide that I'm gonna, and I don't even know if that light speed bundle, where is that? I wonder if it's not on the PC client right now. Um, but there's that light speed bundle for the Galactic Republic Jedi. I feel like that's the only way that I would ever get gear on these characters right now because I just have bigger and better things that I need to be working on. So I did want to mention them because I, I try to say this, like when you're free to play, yes, certain things like these characters, maybe it's not worth the investment, but for someone who's a free to play at the later stages of the game, like Calvin and Sanjita would be two great examples. And I get you're like, oh, not everybody's like them, but there are a lot of people who don't spend money with large accounts or don't spend a crazy amount of money who may need to invest in these characters in order to improve their raid score. So as a content creator, I would be not doing my job, if you will, if I didn't at least mention these guys as part of the raid that potentially could be on that God tier. So all of that said, the raid's coming a lot sooner than I thought. Again, like I said, I thought I had until about August when Jar Jar would be returning um, to farm, but it seems like it's going to happen a lot sooner. And I think this is a good thing. Um, I think it's a great thing because it's going to give you an opportunity to see from the Arnolds of the world, from the Fat Phils, hey guys, here's what's working and here's what isn't. And then you can react. If this was happening in August, like just to give you some, you know, put you at ease. If this was going to happen in August, your guild would expect that you would be much more prepared for what's coming than, hey, it's happening a month earlier. All right, everybody just kind of let's wait and see what's going to work and then we'll hit the ground running. So I think this is actually a blessing that Capital Games kind of throwing it out here that instead of saying, hey, it's coming in August and then your guild's like, why don't you have ETH, Koth, and Kit Fisto ready? Where now they're like, all right, pump the brakes. Let's see what teams are amazing and then we'll tell you what to build. So I think this is good. I'm excited for the raid. I do think that the requirements are a bit skewed towards the top end compared to some of the more recent, compared to the Crate Dragon raid, compared to the Speeder Bike raid. But that is the direction Swigo is trending. There have been a lot of updates to make it easier to build a roster while working on these newer things. A lot of stuff has been added to stores, which I need to cover that in a video. So let me know your thoughts, guys. I've rambled on enough. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. May the force be with you. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, my friends.